Hi, my name is Steve, and today I want to take you through my experience in using the Rebel Point Inspire 3D Scanner and the Creality CR Scan Ferret. So I've purchased both of these 3D scanners with my own money, so nobody's sponsoring this. These are my own opinions, and just hoping to give you some of my experiences if you're looking at getting into the 3D scanner market, looking at these two scanners and trying to see which one best fits your use case. But I'll also say at this time, I don't physically have either of these devices as I've started recording this video. While I had both of them for several weeks and I will take you through my testing and screen sharing and some of the final results in a comparison of the objects, I ended up returning both of them and later on in the video, I'll show you which item I decided to purchase from one of these two companies and why I made that decision. I've also done a couple of previous videos on the Rebel Point Inspire. So if you want to get a little bit closer look at that, uh, actual hands-on using it and some of the features, I've got links here as well as down in the description. And in order to keep this video somewhat condensed and not too long in length, I'm going to break this down into sections so there'll be a timeline down below as well as in the video that you can skip around to different areas. And with that, let's get right into the comparison and the features of each. So I'm going to be scanning several different objects that are more household objects and a lot of this is going to depend on your use case for why you want to purchase a 3D scanner. In my case, I'm more interested in capturing 3D assets for video and animation effects. If you're just using this for 3D printing, that's going to be a different use case, but I will cover the different things throughout this video, no matter which environment you're trying to use. So the first section I want to go over is the physical hardware itself. And so for this, you're going to look at the differences between the Inspire and the Ferret is that the Inspire has more options and features built into the physical device. The Ferret is really a scanner and a camera and an image camera and that's it. So with the Inspire, you get an LED light that if you don't have your own lighting, maybe you're traveling with the device and you don't want to carry a bunch of lighting with you. It does have an LED light to capture the images and actually did a fairly good job. I was pretty impressed. It also has a physical play start and stop button. So you, as you're holding the scanner, you can actually start and stop the recording versus having to tap your phone or reach over to your keyboard to do that as you will with the ferret. It also has a standard mounting hole to mount it to any type of tripod or any standard mount, whereas the ferret has a much smaller mounting hole, but comes with an additional tilt adapter that at the bottom of that has a standard mounting hole. So you cannot physically attach the ferret itself without some sort of an adapter. And then the Inspire also has Wi-Fi built into the device. So this is a nice feature with the Ferret. This is only available if you buy the Ferret Pro. And even then, it's an add-on module. It's not built into the physical scanner itself. So overall, the Ferret is more compact, smaller, but also does not have very many features within the physical hardware itself. And so now I want to get into the software side of the devices. And on the software side, there's really the software portion of scanning the objects and the capabilities within while you're doing a scan. And then there's the software side of post-processing and preparing for your final model. So we're going to start with the scanning portion of the software. Now, both of these come with a desktop version of the software and a app version of the software. And I believe they both are now supporting iOS and Android uh, for cell phones. 
But I will say the Revel Point Inspire and the Revel Scan software was far more user friendly. Everything was similar between the desktop app and the phone app. Has a lot of tools and features available, but both were a similar environment. With the Ferret, the phone app that I was using on my Android phone had some different features in it than the desktop did. And I found this a little bit frustrating because it had things like undo and redo as you were doing your scans, which doesn't show up on the desktop version. It had the ability to adjust an exposure on the images as you're trying to capture the color images that is different than what's on the desktop app. So it was a different experience, and I don't know why the two aren't the same. I wish they were. But also, I had a lot of issues connecting the Ferret to my cell phone. And I have a Google Pixel 7, which is supported and on the Creality website as a supported device. But using the cable, because this was not the Wi-Fi version, using the dual cable, plugging it into my cell phone, it would connect, then two seconds later it would disconnect, it would work for a second, then it would fail, and I was never able to get a successful scan actually using my cell phone. With the Inspire, with the Wi-Fi built into the device, I could wirelessly sync to my cell phone as well as to the desktop, and I had absolutely no issues with the connectivity. Another nice feature that RevelScan has while doing the scanning is single frame capture versus continuous scanning. Continuous scanning is as you're moving, it is continuing to capture frame after frame after frame. And in some situations that works very well. But what I found is capturing color images, the single frame capture was actually very nice to have because you're still capturing one frame, getting all the detail of the model, but only capturing one image. And so if I did continuous, continuous scanning, I might have 2,000, 3,000 frames that I'm capturing, and then the software didn't always do the best job of image mapping those 3,000 images around the object. But if you use single frame capture, you're capturing more like 100 or 150 frames, still getting the object detail, but far less issues with stitching the images together. Now, the Creality software does not have that option. It's continuous all the time, but I will say I did find the image mapping quite well on the Ferret, even though you have far more control, I felt, in the Rebel scan software. And then there is the tracking objects and which device did a better job of having options to track the object. So as an object is rotating, as you're moving the scanner, it has to track the geometry, the uh, tracking markers, whatever it is that you have set up. And this is where the ferret has a much better option. It has the geometry tracking, which is the same as Rebel Point, in which it is capturing the different features and the different points of a object to track it. So both of them have that as a capability. Both of them have marker tracking, so you can put marker dots or you can have a marker mat and it will track the markers instead of the object. But the ferret also has feature tracking. And this I found very helpful when tracking something like a round cylindrical object. The Rebel Scan, the Inspire, was not able to track this can as it went around the turntable because it doesn't see any of the features. It just sees it as a round can and it doesn't know where it is as it's scanning it. But the texture scan on the ferret was able to see the text and the images on the object and actually complete a full scan without having to have any markers or any specialty setup 
and was a very nice feature to have. The other area that the ferret really stood out to me and was very superior to the Inspire was the ability to scan black or dark objects. The back of this joystick is black. It's a flat black, kind of a, almost a, somewhat of a shiny. It's a plastic stick, standard joystick. The Inspire was never able to even see this and even scan anything for the back of this. Whereas the Ferret had no problem picking up all the black and actually capturing all this object detail. I also did some additional testing on my sim rig, and I'll pull up some of those videos where I captured kind of this black fake leather seat that I have, and the Inspire simply could not capture hardly any of the details. It just simply, as you were scanning, it didn't even see it. Even using dark object mode, adjusting the exposure slider, there was nothing I could do. So. For the Inspire, I would have had to have used scanning sprays or some sort of powders to make it see the black, but then that's going to throw off my color images. So now the black isn't going to be black, it's going to be a gray, and now my image isn't going to match the actual object. So on the software post-processing side of things, this is where now you've scanned your object, now you're going to take that point cloud, turn it into a mesh apply the images if you are doing image scanning and try to come out with a final rendered 3D object. And this is where once again the RevelScan software gives you more user control, gives you more features, and gives you everything in one ecosystem where Creality I felt was more limited to the capabilities to put it in the user's hand to do a lot of things. So a few examples of that is with when you are trying to clean the mesh. So you've, uh, you've done the fusion of the point cloud, you now have objects or areas that you want to remove from the scan, it picks up some noise around the object. Within the ferret software, you simply have a lasso tool or a box tool, and you can select the points or deselect points, but that's really about it. Within RevelScan, they have the same lasso tool, but they also have a polygon tool, they have some freehand tools, they have a plane tool that you can select a plane and select above the plane, below the plane, you can invert, you can select, deselect, so a lot more tools at your disposal to make it easier to find the areas you want to remove, clean up the scan. And then after you clean it up, you may have holes in the scan, which is fairly typical. So you need to fill those holes. Within the Creality software, you simply have a checkbox for fill holes and close the object. But that's it how it fills those holes and what it needs to do to make those holes fill correctly, you have no control over. Within RevelScan, it will identify them, you can select them, and then you can tell it, fill it with a curved surface or fill the hole with a planar surface. So you have the ability to have far more control over how it's going to fill those holes and how well it works. And then when it comes to texturing the models, Creality simply has a apply image. It does everything behind the scenes. And in most cases, it did a very good job of mapping the textures, but you had no control over it. You had no options. It did everything for you. And if it didn't work, your only option was really to go back and rescan. Whereas in the RevelScan software, you have two options of applying the image texture or applying vertex mapping, which applies it to the polygons. And that, you could go back and adjust your polygon count of your meshed object and actually get a little bit different result of how it's mapping the image. So if the image texture didn't work, you could try vertex mapping, you could try some different polygon 
counts with the vertex mapping and you at least had a chance to salvage the image mapping versus having to go back and rescan the entire object. And with that in mind, that is another nice feature of RevelScan, the ability to go back to any stage of the post process from fusing the model, meshing the model, texturing the model, and you can go back to any step and restart from the beginning. With the Creality software, there are some times you can go back to a previous stage, but once you do certain stages, I couldn't get back to the original point cloud model. So I was always saving a copy of the original scan, creating a duplicate to make sure I didn't lose that original scan data. So in the end, I ended up returning both of these devices and decided to make a purchase of the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. And while I thoroughly felt the Revel Point Inspire and Revel Scan software were far superior in almost every way to the Creality software and user experience, there were two main features that the Ferret won me over on, and that was texture tracking, the ability to track object based on the texture in the object, not the uh, just the geometry of the object, and the ability to scan black objects. Now, I ended up going with the Pro over the Ferret standard because I could not get the Ferret to connect to my cell phone. And in that case, I needed to have the Wi-Fi bridge, which I'm a little disappointed that I had to upgrade to get the Wi-Fi bridge to get it to work with my cell phone, even though my cell phone was supported and is one of the listed supported devices. In the end, if I'm not able to capture the object details, all of those tools that Rebel Point and Rebel Scan offer are useless if there's no scan data there to use the tools on. So if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you at all, I uh, would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I would love to hear your feedback on either of these devices. Have you used both of them? Have you used one or the other? Do you enjoy it? Are you getting the results you wanted out of it? If there's anything else you would like me to cover on either one of these devices, just leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.